<laughs> welcome, welcome. Instant impact. <laughs> Boy, Coach Keith. I got my guy, B.A. Brooks Austin out in G.A. What's good, big dog? Hey, man, I'm going to tell you what. You are, I mean, just on the mixers, on the ones and twos, that intro. That intro is fire, man. That gets me hype, ready to roll on these instant impact superstars, soon to be superstars. No question, man. Got a chance to get in the studio, cut and slice a little mix up with my guy, my engineer, Mr. Steven Money, out here in Huntington Park. And, uh... New fire intro for Instant Impact. Excited about Instant Impact. We had a great show last week. Looking forward to today's show. Got a plethora of prospects who recently committed. Going to talk about not only their impact, you know, as a high school football player, but what their projectables are, you know, what their impact is going to be in the in the room they're going to be sitting in, in terms of position, and how they're going to impact their new school. Let's start off here on the West Coast, the left coast. Is it the best coast? Man, you you had that West Coast bias, man. I I get the, like you hear that intro, you know Keith's coming out of Cali. I mean, it's it's all Cali swag with that intro, nah, man. But West Coast, y'all got y'all got some talent. But I would say over here on the East Coast, it's more about the size and the and the physicality and the traits and all that good stuff out here. But we got mostly skill guys on this set tonight, and we got mostly guys from your side out there in the West Coast. Start with Xavier Naples. And, man, just recently, a UCLA commit. All these guys recently committed. Man, it's a guy six foot two, 185 pounds. First thing I got on my sheet, it's a long strider, Keith. This guy, I mean, it's a little bit of tightness in the hips. And how I know that as an evaluator is when I watch your hip drive, when I watch you stride out, if that knee doesn't get get above that waistline, I know there's a little bit of tightness in those hips. But we can figure that out. We can loosen those things up. But a smooth runner elsewise out on the field, man. High points of football really, really well. I think as a young player, when he gets into college, because he's not a burner, Keith, I think we can see that on the tape, but he does have good play speed. I think it's the deep ball impact that he's going to be able to have. I'm talking posts. I'm talking goes. I'm talking 50-50 balls, back shoulder plays. I have all my notes. The hands are better than the attributes, Keith. I'm interested to see uh, what you have to say about Xavier Staples. You know, for, first off, he's not a guy that's going to be coming in and ready to play right off the bat. He's mm-hmm. a guy who's underdeveloped physically, very lean, very slender. He's got to build that body up and be ready to get off press coverage at the next level. That's first and foremost, right? He's going to need a, a two to three years of the weight room and a, a, a three squares in a day meal program at UCLA. But I love his length. I love his ability after the catch. But mm-hmm. again, 50-50 ball guy, a guy who's going to go up, high point, warm up the neck of a defensive back if he can get off the ground that high. Xavier Staples, he for me, he's more of an upside guy. He's a developmental piece, um, but a guy that can develop into an impact player down the road if and only if he spends the time in the weight room, commits himself to building his body, adding that strength, adding that size, adding that speed, then you have a big-time outside receiver. Yeah, I mean, you get to 6'3", 210, 215, and we're talking about a really physical guy. Um, I don't know if the separation skills will ever be there, but, I mean, at that size, you know what I'm saying, it's not really going to matter. 50-50 balls, you can win in college doing that kind of stuff. So, nonetheless, a, a solid commitment here from UCLA. No question. Evan Branch, up out of Northern California. And let me tell you, I got a chance to scout this guy about a month ago. And when I came across his tape, I said, wow. First thing I said was, wow. And instantly knows, noticed that he was undervalued and underrated nationally. He, this is not a regional guy. This is not a local guy. This is a national recruit I'm talking about. And he did not get the attention or the recruiting love that he and his talent should have garnered. But you're talking about an explosive vertical penetrator. Brooks, what'd you see on tape? Powerful two gapper, baby. That's exactly yeah. what I see, man. Um, does a really great job. Okay. A little skill set here for you, young defense alignment. When you're attacking a double team, you want to attack the point man, right? The guy, you want to get your hands on the chest of the guy that's attacking you first and then let that other guy try to get off to your hip. But if we can reset the line of scrimmage with that guy trying to attack you first in the double team, which this guy does great, the double team's useless. The the, the tackle that's trying to double team you just going to have to move off to the second level. I think he does that really, really well. Plays with great pad level as well, Keith. Um, r- the first thing I got, the, another thing I got on here on these notes is he removes the angles from an offensive lineman instantly. Mm. 
right off the snap of the football. He's getting hands inside. He's winning there. I think the midsection, I think that that might be some of the coach's issues or maybe the coach's questions about, uh, you know, Evan here. The midsection could be cleaned up just a little bit, but you talk about stone stone hands, man. Uh, Heavy-handed defense alignment. We talked about it last week here on Instant Impact. Um, You know, there's some concerns about the stance as well. I think the feet are a little too narrow in that stance there for the big guy. But, again, you start cleaning up that midsection, and this is a guy that's year two, sophomore year out there at Arizona, people are going to sit there and say, how in the heck did Evan Branch Haynes end up at Arizona? I think that's the type of prospect uh, the Wildcats got here in Branch Haynes. You know, this is the reason why we start the show, Brooks. You talk about a guy who's going to make an instant impact. I I can guarantee you, and I can put my bank account on it, he will play as a freshman. He will be an impact player as a sophomore. And, again, people are going to kick themselves for not recruiting this kid out of Northern California. He's the big-time player. Arizona and Kevin Sumlin, they get a big-time get a defensive tackle. Moving along, Cyrus Fiasse commits to San Diego State. He's out of Liberty High School in Nevada, state champion Liberty High School in Nevada with a big upset in the state title game versus Bishop Gorman. Another kid that a two-way guy, Brooks, he's explosive, he's instinctive, and he's very mm-hmm. physical. Yeah, that's the first thing I saw was the instinctiveness, right? As a running back, especially. Dude's got a great jump cut. But here's also the first thing I noticed, man. Anybody with this type of hair, he, he could come play for me, man. That stuff is majestic. If y'all want to go see some hair on a Polynesian young man, go look at Zyrus's tape. Uh, the other thing I got to say, man, I, I don't know what this this confusion about playing outside linebacker. And and, and Keith, you, you can help me out here a little bit, but – I went and ran the numbers, okay? In the NFL, in the year of 2018, NFL defenses ran 61% nickel, which yeah. means there's only two linebackers on the field, and they're playing inside the box. So either nowadays you're an outside linebacker and you're rushing the passer, or you're an inside linebacker and you're staying in the box. That's what I think Zyrus is going to be doing on the second level. Um, I, yeah, he's got athleticism. He's got ball skills. He's got enough to try to play out in space, out in the slot, um, which is where most outside linebackers are going to be playing, especially in this conference out there with San Diego State because people are going four and five wide all the time. So if you're going to be playing outside linebacker, if you're going to be playing in the slot, you're going to have to cover. And again, though the ball skills are there, I don't see this young man playing in space in the slot. What I do see him doing is being instinctive, like we're saying. Those kind of instincts, leave him in the box, let him go find the ball carry, let him go get after it. Uh, you know, kind of like what we were talking about last week, um, you know, in terms of these inside and outside linebackers. So, again, has the ball skills to play in space, but I wouldn't be doing it. I'd leave him in the box, let him play inside linebacker because that's what his skill set is, man. And that's what his instincts are. Right. He knows how to find uh, open gaps. He knows how to find running lanes as a running back. That's clear as day when you watch the tape. There's no reason for me to believe that that can't translate uh, to a Mike or Will position inside the box. You know, you have to maximize that skill set, that speed and quickness, allow him to play downhill to the football, sideline to sideline, run the football down, and be a car wreck when he once he arrives there. So, again, Zyrus commits to San Diego State. Coach Brady Hogue does a great job coaching defense. He's now taking over as the head man, and uh, they got a good thing going now in San Diego State. They've got a couple of commitments here uh, in back-to-back week. Let's move along, staying in the Mountain West Conference. A kid kind of near and dear to my heart, Jaden Furubotten, Commits the Air Force offensive guard out of Chaparral High School. Brooks, I know you're an O-line guy. Give me what you got. Good choppy feet, man. Good choppy feet in the run game. Never, ever overstrides on tape, which tells me, A, he's probably been well coached. B, but he's attentive to coaching. He's going to listen to it, and he's going to take it uh, along in stride. So never in a bad position foot-wise. Can be a little bit of a leaner, but most guys that are heavy in the run game like his high school was um, are going to be. But I'm going to tell you what. He's going to fit in perfectly at Air Force. This is a high-effort young man. I mean, every snap on the tape is 20, 25 yards downfield. He's finishing, as we like to say as offensive linemen, through the echo of the whistle. It's something our coaches say all of the time. Not a ton of fluidity or athleticism, really, but it's the, the tech otherwise is solid. I mean, the technique is perfect on this young man in the run game. And guess what, man? Hasn't done a lot of pass blocking, but he's not going to have to. I looked it up today. Air Force threw the ball 9.7 times per game last season to the tune of 11 wins, Keith. 11 wins in 2019 college football, running the ball 54 times 
per ball game. He's going to fit in perfectly at Air Force. Solid decision, not only by this coaching staff, but really by this young man. I think this is a really good fit for Jaden. Jaden is a kid who's a former must play back in the Pop Warner levels, right? He's a guy who did not uh, who did not come out as a football player ready and willing to go. He's the guy who had to learn, who had to sit, who had to take his lumps. But in my notes, I have – first thing I have written down here is a fighter. Yes. And that means a lot in the game of football because you're going to face tough times. Especially on the offensive line. Especially on the offensive line. You're going to face that adversity backed up inside your own five in the fourth quarter and you need to drive to put points on the board to either extend your lead or to take the lead. And you need fighters up front, fighters up front that are going to move people that are going to sell out and put their body on the line for the offense to move the football, move the sticks and subsequently convert into the end zone or through the upright. So Jaden Furman Biden, great job by him. Congratulations your commitment to Air Force, and he's got a great coach in high school, Coach Corey Raymer, coaching with the Nike opening offensive line, does a great job, and they've got a lot of big-time prospects up front. Moving along, out of Washington High School, another big offensive tackle committed to Utah, Coley Faui. Brooks, I hey, hope I didn't mess that up, brother. Hey, I was just about <laughs> to say, Keith, I am so glad you're hosting tonight because I would just be – butchering these names left and yes, right. Sir. Coley, we're going to stick with the big K right there. This is a guard in college, and that's okay. I mean, he's already 6'4", 320 pounds. I bet he shows up to college after his senior year of high school, pushing maybe 330, 325. But there's something about that Utah connection with these Polynesian pockets all across the country, man. They find these big jokers, they bring them in, and they translate into really, really good college football players. First note I got, earth mover. This dude moves mass on the offensive line. When he, uh, you know, when he leans on you, reps over, man. I mean, it's absolutely over. There's nothing really you can do. Man, he's tossing them Washington boys all across the field. They don't know what to do with somebody this size. I mean, he looks like a man playing amongst boys just because the size is so overwhelming. And honestly, man, watching the hand shock, if you told me this kid was a 450-pound bencher, maybe throwing up 225 in the 20s range already in high school, I wouldn't be shocked. I wouldn't tell you that, you know, you're absurd or you're speaking out of your butt. This dude's got serious, serious power in his hands. Uh, we call that a hand shock from hell uh, in the offensive line room. He's going to be a lock and start guard uh, at Utah, man. He will play very, very early in that system, depending upon what the depth chart looks like. But it's not going to be a caliber about the talent. It's going to be about, you know, how deep they are at the guard position. Uh, I would be interested to see, honestly, Keith, and, and this may be something that Coley's totally unfamiliar with, Maybe play some center, too. I mean, this isn't a tackle prospect to me. I just don't no. see it, though. We do see him pulling some pull on some counter on tape. There is some athleticism there. You know, it's limited, albeit. But he does show some, you know, some foot speed and whatnot. But this is a guard, man. This is a punishing, punishing guard. He's going to move three techniques the day he shows up in college. Yeah, there's no question about it. Brute force, right? Yes. Brute force. He's coming off the ball, and he is moving people from point A to point B and wherever else he wants to take them. That type of physicality always translates to the next level. Again, can he keep his weight under control? Can he continue to inc increase that foot speed, that foot quickness, and stay low in pad level and finish through the echo of the whistle? Let's move along. Kijaya Holloway, UCLA out of San Jacinto High School. I'm a big fan of this kid for a lot of different reasons, Brooks. You got a chance to watch him. What'd you think? Man, 6'3", 210. This is a dual threat. We talked about it last week on the show. Some guys running four eights, not really dual threats, but they run a little bit in, in high school, so people want to consider them dual threats. No, man. This is a dual threat quarterback. He is absolutely going to run all over the field uh, in college there at UCLA. Um, pretty decent deep ball. The, the arm strength is there, Keith. I, there's not much else on the tape other than read option, uh, power option, quarterback power, quarterback counter, deep balls, post and goes. Uh, and some and some deep comebacks, but you know what? The ball pops out of his hand. The ball the ball can abs he can absolutely spin it. No ducks. I mean, tight spiral. All that stuff we want to talk about. We want to see uh, from an offensive, you know, a quarterback and a guy that's going to lead an offense. Also, one thing I saw on tape, Keith, that I really like. He controls the offense. If if there's a if there's a wide receiver out of alignment, if there's a wide receiver out of position or confused on maybe what he's supposed to be doing, 
he's going to let them know. He's going to say, hey, man, you got the slant. Hey, you got a block number two. Hey, you got whatever it is. He corrects other people around him, makes people around him better. Um, I, I do like the deep ball. I think he's got tremendous arm strength. But honestly, with the way this guy runs the football and with his frame, Keith, and I know we're not into making kids play positions they don't want to play, but if you told me after three years of college he turns into like a Ryan Tannehill who showed – or the opposite of a Ryan Tannehill, maybe showed up as a, a wide receiver, moved to, to quarterback, flip-flop that, a guy who's playing quarterback now that might end up at wide receiver just because, man, the, the, the way this guy impacts the game with the ball in his hands as a runner – I think it's just incredibly valuable. And if he can't make it on the field as a quarterback early on, get him out there at wide receiver, let him catch some balls, and let him make some plays. You know, if I, if I had to ask someone, or if someone asked me, a big six foot three, six foot four quarterback who's coming in at 210 pounds with that type of athleticism and athletic ability and speed in the open field, what coach would you want him to play for? Five years ago, six years ago, I would have said Chip Kelly. Right. Mm -hmm. Chip Kelly, because he took a guy and, and he's the one who that was Marcus, Marcus Mariota. Right. Right. Yeah, it was so Marcus. What I have written down in my notes here is Kijaya Holloway is what we like to call a big stepper. Mm. He's a chunk eater. Right. Big yeah. plays in the pass game, big plays in the run game. He's not a guy looking to check the ball down. He's trying to go over the top. He's trying to hit you with an explosive play when he pulls it down or in a quarterback design runs. The guy is dangerous, very dangerous. At that type of size and that type of speed, you can imagine he's going to be 225, 230 before he hits the field at about six, three and a half. He's going to be a problem. He's going to be a big problem yeah. with his arm and his legs. He can put unbelievable pressure on a defense. And just in case things don't work out, that type of versatility and athletic ability does translate well at other positions on the football field. And, and I'll say this, man. I, I guarantee you, this is probably what Jamie Newman from Wake Forest now at Georgia. It's probably what he looked like in high school. 6'3", 210 pounds, incredible athlete, and then boom, you show up into college. And granted, he's still got some accuracy issues. He's still 60% over, you know, 17 starts there at Wake Forest. So still some accuracy issues in the arm talent, but incredibly powerful arm. Six Now he's six foot four, 230 pounds, rocked up as can be. Uh, and is a physical presence on the football field. And he's going to end up being probably a first-round draft pick, assuming all things go relatively well this year at Georgia. So, I mean, if if that's what you tell me that Kajaya ends up turning out to be, I mean, I wouldn't be shocked. But it's it's going to take a lot of development. Don't get me wrong. No, there's no question about it. Right. And if I had to get him to a place where he needs to develop, Chip Kelly's a great guy uh, to learn under. There's no question about it. Let's move along. We're talking about he -he, Michael <laughs> Jackson. Not the Michael Jackson everybody's thinking about. We're talking about Nevada's own Michael Jackson, wide receiver, 2021 class, makes a commitment to USC. I like this kid a lot, Brooks. Yeah. I like him a lot. He reminds me of a USC receiver that's already in a stable. He's got a little Amon Ross St. Brown in his game. Actually, a whole lot of Amon Ross St. Brown in his game. I think he's a great fit for that wide open USC option, uh, option route offense out of the slot. He's a catch-and-run guy. He's a smooth operator. And he's got explosive speed in the open field. Talk to me about what you saw on tape. I mean, first of all, how about Desert Pines out of Nevada? The last couple seasons. Last year, took Darnell Washington, five-star athlete, playing tight end now at Georgia. He comes all the way East Coast. And then in the 2021 class, you got Michael Jackson the third, MJ3, as you would. I, you know what? I love RG3 for giving us that nickname for every the third there ever is because it just sounds so clean. It does MJ3. Sound clean. Yes, uh, but no, nah, man, this kid can go. It's the first thing I got on the nose. This kid can flat out run. As yes, soon sir. as you turn it on, the athleticism just jumps off the tape. Just as you mentioned, man, a smooth guy. I mean, a smooth strider. Doesn't look like there's much effort. Uh, looks like he's playing. The game looks very, very easy uh, to Michael Jackson. I saw one clip that just solidified the deal for me, man. He caught a bubble screen, outran the first defender. And as soon as he got literally like five yards down the field, whole sideline put their hands up because they knew. They wasn't knew nobody what catching was. him. Yeah, they knew exactly what it was. Mm -hmm. Nobody was catching him. Uh, nobody was running him down. And you know what? I also like to see, Keith, is for a guy that we think is a burner, for a guy that the first thing we said is he's smooth and he's can, he can go, he's a pretty daggum good route runner too. I mean, yeah. this guy can get in and out of his breaks uh, really, really well. As you mentioned, man, electric in the open field. Uh, and I think he's going to add some value in the return game as well in college. Um, so just an all-around great athlete, first of all, 
but a pretty daggum good receiver uh, as well. Did the Trojans get here in MJ3, as M- we'll call him? MJ3. Let's move along. Out of Texas, USC gets another commitment. Of course, big offensive staff, Graham Harrell at the, as, the, as the OC there at USC. They dip back into Texas, and they've now got commitments from more guys in Texas than they've had in one class over the last decade. Lake McCree, Lake Travis High School. Talk to me about the tight end you saw and what his game looks like and how he translates to the next level. Let's have a little fun. Let's play a game of trivia with Keith here. Lake Travis High School, home of who? Lake Travis High School, home of Baker Mayfield. Boom. <laughs> That's how you know the guy does Come his on. stuff right there. Come on, baby. You know, you know how Lake, I get out. <laughs> Lake Travis High School, home of Lake McCree. Uh, one thing you'll notice immediately – doesn't have a junior tape. It's because he's. It yep. seems he suffered a knee injury. But the sophomore tape, man, it's electric. It's freaky. I mean, yeah. it's, it's freaky. It's electric. I mean, six five, two hundred. He was probably playing at two fifteen. He's probably mm-hmm. bounced up to two twenty five post injury uh, at this point. He probably cleaned some things up. Probably get a little trimmer uh, before his senior year goes on. But you know, he can be a little bit of a body catcher at times. But most tight ends at this young age can be because oftentimes they're just in wide open spaces because they've been designed to be so. Uh, but this dude plays really, really aggressively on the football field. And I like to see that, man. And he and he plays in what I call that sniffer position. For those yeah. of you who don't know what I'm talking about, he is lined up directly behind the tackle. Yeah. I say a, I call it a sniffer position because it looks like he's sniffing the butt of the tackle. That's right. The sniffer, nice and easy for us. Um, but it looks like he's going to be a really good split zone blocker in college. If that's the type of offense you want to run, it's what they run there at Lake Travis. They send him backside, and they say, hey, that defensive end over there, we are in big boy. We talk about big boy football. This is big boy high school football out at Lake Travis High School, and they send him out there by himself to split zone block a defensive end. So that tells me what they think about this guy's blocking abilities. I have no questions. Um, You know, a great – I think there could be some work, like we mentioned, on the hands. I think he's far more Zach Ertz than he is George Kittle. I guarantee you if you put him on the line and said run a 40, it'd be closer to 475, 48, and that's okay. Zach Ertz ran a 477 at the NFL Combine. Yeah. Now, George Kittle ran close to a 458, 4, 46. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, freakish. It ain't that. It ain't going to be incredible yards after the catch. But he's always going to find a way to be open. He understands zone defenses. He understands how to find voids in defenses. And guess what? That stuff plays. And that stuff don't just play on Saturday. It plays on Sundays, too. So Lake McCree, uh, you know, and it wasn't just USC, man. Some big SEC programs trying to get after this kid, too. Uh, and without a junior tape. So that just tells you he did all he needed to do just in two years of high school out there Lake Travis. Listen, no question. He's got, he has the frame. He has the length. He's a guy that should attack the middle of the field, create matchups in the middle of the field for off play action as that sniffer. Here's my concern. My concern is a guy who is probably a natural 4 8 guy coming mm-hmm. off of a serious knee injury. Yeah. What type of athleticism are we talking about? What's the ceiling for that athleticism? And what type of mismatches can you really create? Um, and, and I know mm-hmm. the injuries aren't, you know, what they used to be, but you're betting on this kid coming in, developing as an athlete, developing as a tight end. I like I love the way he plays as a blocker. But the tight end blocking or any types of blocking, it's all about effort, right? It's talking about effort and technique. T- blocking is a lot like rebounding. Who wants it more? And mm-hmm. this kid wants it and he plays angry with the football in his hand. But I'm concerned about the fluidity how he catches the football. It is not fluid. He fights a little bit. He does not look comfortable. So now you're talking about a guy who has a knee issue, is coming back from surgery, didn't have a junior tape, who is not comfortable with the football. That's putting a lot of investment behind a lot of questions. Yeah. 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 A lot of of questions there. You're putting a lot of investment off of 6'5", 220. And I, I, I totally understand that. But here I think is the the relatively good news, at least for Lake. It seems that the knee injury was during, you know, either the offseason training or maybe early on in his junior year. He's already back running, man. If you saw his commitment video, he's out there running around with a, a knee brace on his left knee, it looked like. So he's back moving around. And I think the number one attribute this kid has going for him outside of the measurables is that want to. It's that instinct to play hard uh, and, and, you know, play aggressively. And you got to have that. As a, as a tight end. I don't know, Keith. I, I, I'm, I'm stuck here in SEC country. I prefer to watch SEC football on Saturdays, typically in the box up there in Athens. 
does USC still run into the line stuff? Are they still putting uh, tight ends' hands in the dirt? Or are they like everybody else nowadays and leaving no. them in space? No, no, no tight ends. Mostly so, with their hand in the, they got everybody spread out. They're running so four and five wide, and every other play is a stop route right on the outside. So yeah, there's there's reason for concern, but I guarantee you, if you leave him in the slot and say, "Hey, go stand over the ball," like go spot, basically, I, yeah. he's going to be a big body. I mean, he's going to give you something to throw to. Now, the only problem is he's going to have to keep the ball away from his body because yeah. them DBs are going to be after it. So uh, there's some things to clean up. Don't get me wrong, but uh, you know, it's a projectable type of a kid. This is a year two year three type of instant impact, maybe not day one when he steps on campus. No question about it. Let's move along. Travion Cooley up out of North Carolina, commits to Louisville. Louisville getting a runner, okay, getting a runner with some speed. I love his sudden feet in the hole. He's a mm -hmm. slasher, and he's got natural lateral instincts. It's mm -hmm. always key for a back, Brooks, the lateral instincts. When to cut it back, when to cut across the field, and create that type of off-balance defender where they cannot react and respond to your movement. Travion Cooley, I believe, is a slasher with some speed. What you see on tape? Thick and powerful, man. And I, I think based off what you, your evaluation you just gave me, I think you're going to love these comparisons. In my notes, I say, think more Le'Veon Bell, on Johnson, than maybe DeAndre Swift and LaShawn McCoy. This is a sure. guy – that when I'm watching good backs, when I'm watching really, really great backs, like guys that can play on Sundays when they get there or guys that can play immediately when they get to college, it's guys I like to say play Tetris, right? They work their way through the defense horizontally, getting in and out, and then once they find that hole, once they find that crease, boom, gone, see you. But, I mean, foot, pedal to the metal, dang to the floor, like they used yeah. to say, uh, you know, in Smokey and the Bandit. So I think that's what this kid's got. I, I don't think there's a lot of twitch here. But what there is is great vision, uh, you know, a great lateral ability, like you just said, the ability to get in and out. And I think the start and stop speed is pretty daggone phenomenal uh, on Travion Cooley as well. Um, you know, there's some room in his – there's room in this game nowadays for backs like this. They don't all have to be Clyde edwards Hilaire. They don't all have to be DeAndre Swift. They don't all have to be really, really skinny and burners running four three eights. They don't have to be that anymore or not all the time. So I think another thing I see on tape, man, if, if you want to come downhill and tackle this guy, you You'll better bring, you better bring your lunch you. pail. I That's mean, right. this, this dude wants – I mean, he wants all the smoke. I mean, he can yeah. make you miss. He can stick his foot in the ground and get north and south. But when I say thick and powerful, I mean thick and powerful. You better you better bring it if you're going to come try to tackle this kid in the hole. Yeah, you know, a lot of times when you talk about a great running back, it's, it's going to come down to three things. You got to have three things. You got to be able to run through people, run around people, which means make a miss, or run past people. He can do all three. I think he's a little undervalued nationally. This is a big slasher who can be punishing, who can make you miss with sudden feet in a phone booth, or can get lateral, hit the sidelines, and outrun you. I like Travion Cool. I think Louisville got a good guy. Uh, I think he plays really, Houston. really early at Louisville. I really do. Oh. I think he plays early. I, listen, I wouldn't doubt that at all. Let's move along. Florida, Troy, Stellato, Clemson commit. Now, this came down to Clemson, Ohio State. Okay. Yeah. Came down and I've seen this kid on tape. He's a slot, right? He's tough. He's got some strength. He's got some quickness. But I'm just not sold, Brooks. Talk to me. I'm not sold. John Garcia seems to think he's one of the John Garcia SI.com, that is, seems to think he's one of the faster guys uh, in high school football nowadays. And if you look at it, it's a 4 4 2 runner. I mean, the shuttle doesn't really match up to what the 40 says, which is a little bit concerning for me if you're going to play in the slot. But the straight line speed is definitely there. And granted, he is undersized. He's six foot, 175 pounds. But if – I mean, this is a Clemson receiver, Keith. That's what, that's what they look like. They either look like Justin Ross, they either look like T. Higgins, or they look like Hunter Renfro. And I don't mean that to be a white-black thing. This is, this is legit. I mean, Hunter Renfro is 5'11", 175 pounds. This Troy, is Stiletto, Troy Stiletto is six foot, 165 pounds. Yeah. Justin Ross is six foot four, 215 pounds. T. Higgins is six foot three and a half, 205 pounds. Okay. So you either do that on the outside with Justin Ross and T. Higgins, or you do this on the inside with Troy Stiletto uh, and Hunter Renfro. So, you know, I think this is a guy that probably is going to have to be able to win one on one matchups in the slot. And what they're banking on at Clemson 
it's not only the measurables that, you know, the attitude and, and, and the, you know, the ability, the coachability, because that's the biggest thing at Clemson. They, they call them Clemson guys for a reason. OK, um, you got to be able to go in there and be coached and, and pretty much bite your tongue for three and a half years, four years and be coachable and listen and, and, and play hard and do all that good stuff and be extremely talented, which I think this guy is. Um, we'll see if the short area quickness gets there because it obviously ain't quite there yet. When I see your 40 time below your short shuttle time, yeah. I've got concerns. It's the same concerns that NFL evaluators had about DK Metcalf. When we talk about those three cone drills, they are important. Seeing how you get in and out of breaks are important. Now, the difference is DK Metcalf goes to Seattle and he's six foot three. He can run a four, two, eight, whatever it was. And he plays in the best offense for that kind of stuff where you can just go vertical. And guess yes. what? We got the best deep ball thrower in the NFL in Russell Wilson. So it worked out there, but it's not always going to work out like that. If Troy Stilato is going to win in the slot, it's going to have to get a lot quicker, not just straight burning speed. If it's going to be straight burning speed, he might as well be Andy Isabella. I mean, that's it might, might as well be what it is out there from UMass now playing for Arizona. So there's some things to clean up. I'm, I'm just like you. I'm not so sold. But when Dabo comes in and Dabo says, I want that guy, a lot of people in this industry are like, well, Dabo must know something we don't. Well, maybe he does, or maybe he doesn't. Maybe it's a miss. So we'll see. No, we'll definitely see. And listen, I'm not always right. I mean, you know, hey, 99 times out of 100, I am right. One time, this may be time. I hope I'm not right. But Troy Stello, he's got something to show me at the next level. He's got to be able to win, like you said, in one-on-one -on -one coverage. He's got to be able to create separation in the slot. And is he a guy, uh, when he creates a separation, is he a clean catcher? I didn't see that on tape. I didn't see a clean hands, natural hands guy, right? Uh, Hunter Renfro was a natural hands guy. When they went to go win a national Super. championship, it was Hunter Renfro they were trying to throw the ball to, okay? He's Absolutely. a natural, reliable third down receiver. I'm not sure if I see that on tape with Troy Stilato, but again, let's move along. Clemson got him. And uh, Ohio State misses out. Thomas Remack out of Ohio, going to West Virginia. He's a two-way guy. I like him on both sides of the ball here. Brooks, 6'6", 275. He's athletic, okay, as an offensive tackle, and he's relentless as a defensive end. What you like about him? Bro, Keith, I, I really hate to do this right now, but I think we got confused. I, I don't have Troy on my notes. When you said Reeves, Brady, and Evans on my text – I thought you said those are the three guys you want. So those are the three <laughs> guys I put notes on. All these other guys, I really don't want to have to go through 10 guys bullshitting because that's not the way I cut my stuff. No, That's not the way I do this. So if you if we can, and I th we're off on listen, pages look, now. No, okay, if, you, if you know those three guys, can we do those three guys and then we'll be done? Yeah, let's go with it. All right, so we'll go with Zaquan Reeves. I guess that's how you pronounce that. Yeah, Zaquan. Uh, and Cameron Brady are my yeah. last two I've got on my notes. And – if we can, we're, we already got some editing work to do now, and I'm sorry for doing that to you. But no, it's all right. Let's I, go with it. Let's I, go. All right. I'm, that's on me, bro. We'll be you better. Next, I'll be better next time. Here we go. Zaquan Reeves, intro it. So, Zaquan Reeves, uh, you talk about another athlete, right? An athlete and a playmaker. What did you see on film from this kid? How is he going to impact the game at the next level? So, not a lot of tape on Zaquan Reeves. And what I, what I mean by that is – I mean, he, he didn't put a highlight tape together. He just kind of put his game tapes together, and that's great. Right. It, but it makes my job as an evaluator much, much harder. I spend more time, you know, watching huddle, uh, huddle commercials about not dipping and not vaping than I actually do watching the kids tape. But what I do know sure. about Zaquan Reeves is he's six foot three, man. He's 190 pounds. This is the definition of a long corner. And when you watch him, he walks down. He'll walk down and play man-to-man. -man, play up in your face and do it with a lot of physicality as you would expect with a guy this long and strong. He's got pretty quick feet as well for a guy that's this tall. Uh, some, some good pitter-patter here. So the feet aren't stuck in the ground very often at the cornerback positions. Um, but, you know, there's going to be some questions, Keith, about whether or not he's going to have to make a transition to safety. And here's why. And it's becoming more common nowadays with schools like Texas a and South Carolina, and even other schools in the SEC where they've started realizing, look, everybody's rolling out six foot five X's and Z's. So we best go get six foot three cornerbacks and CBs, if you will. I meant to rhyme that on purpose. But um, anyways, the, the coaches are starting to catch up that maybe we shouldn't move these guys back after we pound weight on them. Maybe we should leave them thin, wiry, and quick and keep them at corner. So maybe that's where Zaquan stays. 
um, at the cornerback position. But if he shows up to college and gets those three squares that we're talking about and gets into that strength and conditioning program, and next thing you know, he's 215, well, he's probably going to be making the transition to safety just because that's what it is. Um, and, and maybe he's a deep ball safety because the ball skills are there as well. But it, he's definitely got the frame to add weight in college, and I definitely think he's going to. And, again, I think um, – the way his body matures and develops over the next two, three years is going to determine where he's going to be. Because here's the thing. Normally, when you add that type of weight, you don't keep that same type of fluidity and no. speed, right? It, it, it shrinks it, right? And the way weight- we've I think we've seen it with Tyson Campbell here at Georgia. A yep. five star, a five star corner that had all the speed and measurables you could possibly imagine gets into a division one program and gets rocked up. Adds 15, 20 pounds, and then next thing you know, DJ Daniels beating him out. Yep. You know, as a, as a transfer corner. Granted, he was the number one transfer corner in the country uh, at Georgia, but I mean, it, it happens all the time, man. But it's yep. the 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 thing that might separate Z- uh, Zaquan from what Tyson Campbell has is I question Tyson Campbell's you know ability to transfer to safety because I don't know if he wants to thump. I don't know if he wants to tackle. I don't know if he wants to play with physicality. You turn Reeves' tape on, that's all he wants to do. All he oh, yeah. wants to do is hit people, and all he wants to do is hurt people. So if that's what you want to do and that's what you can do, then the transition, if it's asked of you, the transition becomes much smoother at the college level. Yeah, no question about it. Let's move it along. UCF got a commitment. Cameron Brady, this is an intriguing prospect here. Yes. Intriguing prospect for multiple reasons. When you cut on the tape, what jumped out at you? Grown man. This is, a gro- mm-hmm. this is a grown man in Texas high school football, something you don't see very often where one guy, you turn on the tape, and he's physically more impressive just on sheer body measurables than anybody else on the field, and that's what this guy is. He's six foot two, so maybe six foot, pushing on six three, yep. pushing up on 200 pounds, and he carries most of it in his butt, hips, and thighs. I mean, it is thick down from the hips down. So, I mean, a high point specialist, but not a lot of burst. OK, right. what you'll notice if you follow us, especially Keith and I, I yeah, it's great to know that you can run a four four. It's all fine and dandy. That's what most of the other recruiting services base those stars off of. Play the only speed, reason, baby. Yeah. The only reason Cameron Brady doesn't have a five star or a four star next to his name is because he didn't go to a rivals or a 24 seven camp and put down a four four eight. OK, if you right. go look at the four and five stars, the, if they're not six foot five, if they're six foot two, like Cameron is. If they're a four or five star, they're running low sub four fours or su- you know under four no five question. in the forty. No question. This kid, this kid doesn't do that. But like you said, the play speed is there. The only problem for me is he doesn't quite separate on the high school level. I think that's the other thing that some evaluators are seeing. But he's a high point specialist, man. He doesn't really, he doesn't really have to separate at the high school level right now. And and guess what? I didn't think AJ Brown separated greatly in college. But guess what he's doing now in the league? He's balling out. Had 900 yards as a tr- as a, a, a rookie last year. So it happens all the time where we see these guys that maybe – Nikhil Harry, another prime example, didn't really separate in college at Arizona State. No. First-round yeah. draft pick because it didn't matter. If you threw it in his vicinity, he mm-hmm. was coming down with the ball. I think Cameron Brady's a very, very similar prospect. A power forward playing wide receiver. An undersized yeah. power forward playing wide receiver. I'm going to tell you why this guy is intriguing for me. Where his body goes is going to determine a lot. I think he's going to be able to play outside. I think he's going to be able to play a physical inside guy. He's going to be a guy that you're going to get Super a matchup slot. on. Super slot, right. You're going to get a matchup advantage versus a safety because he's too strong versus a linebacker because I think he has enough play speed to create vertical separation or get in and out of his break. But like you said, high point specialist, 50-50 monster. You can call that 80-20 most times. He's a big-time player. I like him. I like the fit at UCF. They run a wide-open offense. They create a lot of one-on-one matchups. This guy can win down the field. So I like it. I like it a lot. Let's move yeah, on. I do, I do, too. Deep ball threat, for sure. You got to have those in college, 100%. And, and maybe the complete opposite of who we just talked about. I know I'm doing your job here a little bit. No, you uh, good. But the complete opposite of Cameron Brady in terms of – I mean, that's a physical specimen – Jacoby George, the the new Miami commit, oh, not yeah. exactly that. We're we're talking about a five foot eleven, one hundred and sixty five, one hundred and seventy five pounder, but he's a flat out 
Burner. Man, he Burner. can fly good after it. Burner. Yes, sir. Florida speed, baby. Yes. Florida fire speed, sugar canes, muck city, plantation high school. Jacoby George can go. He can hit it and get it on the highway with anybody in the country. He's long, he's wiry, and he's slender. He's not carrying a bunch of weight, but he's got a lot of smoke behind him as he matriculates up the field and makes big-time plays. Love his ball skills. He's got wiry-type strength. A lot of times, guys are trying to bring him to the ground or fighting for balls. He ends up winning. Miami, they get a Miami kind of guy. Is he a Miami guy? He's a Miami guy. He plays with that swagger. He plays with that intensity. He's a big-time playmaker on the outside. I like him. Jacoby George going to the U. Got a player comparison for you. How about, Desha- how about Deshaun Jackson? I mean, Ooh. this this is kind of what it looks like when they're younger, right? Five foot ten, five foot eleven. You talk about wiry play strength. Deshaun Jackson been in the league thirteen years, and he's a he's a grown man. I mean, he 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 throws people off of him. Now, granted, he runs away from most of them, but he throws some people off of him too. And here's a little insider note for you because I covered Georgia and I do it pretty daggum well at DogsDaily.com. There's no coincidence, or at least I don't think there is, that. Jacoby George committed to the University of Miami the day after Romello Brinson set his commitment date for June 13th. Okay, Romello Brinson set the believed to be, at least on our website, it's a it's kind of a two-headed race between Georgia and Miami for another burner out of South Florida in Romello Brinson. The only difference is Brinson's six foot two, and he can go like this as well. I mean, both of them are sub 11, kind of in that 10, 8, 10. 10 to 5, 8, or 10, 5 to 10, 8 range in the 100 meter. So we're talking about elite world class speed. Both of them have it. The only difference is, you know, Jacoby George is sealed up going to Miami. I think it would be a skill duplication if they were to take Romello Brinson as well. So there's my insider note for you for the evening, Keith. Don't try to get any more out of me because I ain't giving it. Hey, listen, man, Miami can take and they can use as many playmakers on the outside as they can find because right now the quarterback position. Um, they're struggling to find a guy. I know they got a big time transfer out of Houston. Uh, hey, <laughs> but behind that has been a struggle. It's been a real, real struggle for the Canes. But uh, that, that's just going to wrap it up, man. Hey, Brooks, great job here on the show. Love what you brought. You brought the energy. You brought the juice. I'm excited about next week's show. Some big hey, man, time guys. Can, can we get some daggum East Coast guys out here, man? I felt like I spent my – I mean, yeah, we had the Florida kid. We wrapped it up with the Florida kid. But can we get some daggum East Coast guys on the show? Holy smokes, show your favoritism, why don't you, Keith? Don't worry. Listen, East Coast guys <laughs> just don't seem like they're, they're They're committing here. West Coast guys yeah, trying to right. lock it in, trying to lock it down, playing hey, a smart play, right? You know what that, you know what that tells me? Mm-hmm. That, tell, that tells me the big dogs out here on the East Coast figuring and picking and choosing where they want to go, not trying to settle in on a spot. Maybe, hey, maybe we got some dudes out here, Keith. That's all I'm saying. Brooks, y'all got BA. Y'all got some dudes. <laughs> I respect it, I, I, and I check it. But, uh, no, listen, I appreciate you for jumping on every week, Instant Impact. We're going live, man. We're going to take this baby live. It's a whole show, national recruiting we're breaking it down. We're giving it to you raw and uncut. If we don't like them, we're going to tell you. If we love them, we're going to tell you. If we're, we're not so, it is what it is. I mean, we're pulling no punches. We're going hard in the paint. Coach Keith, BA from Cali to Georgia, this is how we roll. We appreciate you guys for joining us. We'll catch you here next week on Instant Impact. Y'all be good.